I guess what's really important to me is that New Zealanders um, were instrumental in putting the first satellite into orbit. Not many people know that, but this guy here is uh, Werner Von Braun, the famous rocket scientist, so he basically built the Saturn V and went to the moon. And this guy here is, is William Pickering, um, a guy from Nelson, and that rocket they're holding is the Explorer 1, the first US satellite to go into orbit. So Kiwis have their, um, have their place in space and in, in an innovation. I started Rocket Lab in 2007. Um, I was building rockets when I was still at school, and um, they just got larger and larger and more and more complicated to the point that um, it became feasible to do something commercial with them. We're a team of 22 guys at the moment, um, and we drastically need more people. We're considered world leaders in a um, in particular kind of propulsion called viscous liquid monopropellants and GNC, uh, Guidance Navigation Control Algorithms. And uh, we won a few awards along the way and, and stuff like that. So um, in order to be able to go and you know, win contracts and, and do what we want to do, we needed to, to do something to make the world take notice. So um, we put all our eggs in one basket and back in 2009 we built a rocket called RTR-1 and um, we launched that and became the first private company in the Southern Hemisphere to, to reach space. In the US it was all about how on earth did those Kiwis make that rocket so small and get so, so much performance out of a small rocket. So we did a whole lot of stuff in that launch vehicle that um, was really pushing the boundaries and, um, and after we did the launch um, Basically, the deal we did with the New Zealand media was that they could follow it and, um, and do whatever they want with it, provided they syndicate it through their international partners. So we found ourselves after that launch in the position um, of gaining credibility and uh, instead of turning up at the likes of DARPA and Lockheed Martin begging for a meeting, we were invited by the directors of those companies to come and talk to them. So that's, that's kind of the, the key element. DARPA was kind of our big break, I guess, early on. Um, it's... it's enormously hard to get a DARPA contract even if you're a US company. So um, we did that and we proved that it worked and then we went back to the DARPA and um, after we built a lab scale motor and proved that the, the chemistry was right and the physics were right and um, they, uh, they funded us again to, uh, to do another program and um, that program was to demonstrate the technology uh, in the most controversial way possible. So we built a, uh, an AIM-9 Sidewinder missile we launched it and uh, we smoked the current state of the art for an AIM-9 and then life got really, really interesting. Everything that, that we've done for Rocket Lab to date has been for the bigger picture stuff. Um, I've got no desires to be a defence contractor, I've got no desires to increase the performance of a missile by 18%, in fact quite the converse, but nevertheless the DARPA contract, the Lockheed Martin's work we do, the Aerojet work, it's all weaving a path to where we actually want to go and this is what I want to talk about here is, is, is space. What would happen if you could drastically change the way we access space? So I'll give you an example of this. If you want to be Sky Television, you've got to go out and you've got to buy three, a minimum of three geosync satellites. Each one of those satellites runs you between 50 and 100 million dollars. The launch runs you about the same, or more than that, probably a minimum of 100 million dollars for the launch. Because you've got three assets up there, if you lose one asset on a launch, um, you're out of business, so you've got to insure the crap out of it. So you can add another $100 million on there for sure. So basically, if you want to be Sky Television, you've got to raise a half a billion dollar capital minimum. So what would happen if you took that half a billion dollar capital and turned it into five million to be Sky Television? If you could get on orbit for, for five million dollars and be commercial, then the world changes. So if you can really change the access of space by orders of magnitude, then all of a sudden these sort of things can happen. You can own your own satellite. You can do whatever you want it. Real time crop, crop monitoring, real time earth observation. I mean the weather forecasting we've got is, is basically limited by the amount of assets we have in orbit. I mean how crazy is that? So that's, that's what Rocket Lab is actually all about. Is how can we change the way we access space and how can we significantly impact um, the cost of getting there? And if we can do that, then the world's a, a very different place. So I guess it all starts off with a good idea and um, what is a good idea and what's a bad idea? Um, I guess you just got to back yourself on this one. Um, is it a good idea to create a space company in New Zealand that has no heritage in space and try and hit the control alt delete button on the space industry? Is that a good idea? 99% of people would tell you that's absolutely crazy. That's just not a good idea. That's never going to work. 
but you kind of got to back yourself and, and I guess there's no good idea and there's no bad idea. As long as you think it's a good idea, um, I'd just say go for it. Risk is, is everywhere, especially for a space company. Risk is, risk is, is everywhere. So, I mean, uh, we design a launch vehicle with a safety factor of 1.1 to 1.2. So what that means is you only need to be a tiny little bit out and you've got shrapnel everywhere. So there's risk in engineering risk, there's risk in business risk. For example, that launch we did back in 2009, if that thing sputtered it on the pad, um, we, would, we wouldn't be here today, we'd be out of business instantly. Courage, you need lots and lots of courage because like I said before, is, is there'll be a lot of people that tell you what you're doing is silly um, and, and um, you shouldn't be doing it and you just, you just got to push through. If you're not passionate and driven and absolutely motivated, you will fail. I don't, I don't really believe that, that a, an entrepreneur is, is defined by their idea um, or by how big a balls they've got. I think this is what actually defines an entrepreneur. If you expect it to, uh, to, to try and you know, take a business from nothing to something and it, it, to be a, it to be a breeze, someone's going to walk in and offer you a whole lot of cash for your, for your business and you're going to walk out, it just doesn't happen that way. You've got a finite period of time on this planet um, and believe me, it goes fast. So um, make your time on the planet count. Um, so that's kind of the, the precursor to the statement, don't dick around, just, just get it done.